Royal Tour, 1967, the final day. On Parliament Hill in Ottawa, a shining spectacle of color and movement, as Her Majesty the Queen presents colors and guidon to five Canadian regiments. I'm Lloyd Robertson speaking to you from the Capitol as CBC Television brings you live coverage of the event. Upwards of 5,000 guests have been invited here today. Members of the Cabinet, Diplomatic Corps, specially invited guests representing the regiments on parade, and members of the public who have gathered beyond the wrought iron gate along Wellington Street and Parliament Hill. Five 50-man guards have been drawn up on the hill, and they are now standing at ease, waiting for the arrival of Her Majesty the Queen. Let's read from the left of the picture as we see it here. The 1st Battalion, the Canadian Guards, 2nd Battalion, the Canadian Guards, easily identified by their voluminous bearskin headdress. Then the Ontario Regiment from Oshawa, the Sherbrooke Hussars, based in Sherbrooke, Quebec. Next to them, the 1st Hussars from London, Ontario. And the Cameron Highlanders of Ottawa in their number one dress with blue bonnets and of course wearing the Cameron tartan. The hill is filled with people this afternoon for a ceremony that has been called by many people the first of its kind in Canada. With me is Godfrey Talbot of the BBC, and Godfrey has been covering this royal tour since the Queen touched down in Canada last Thursday afternoon. She just came from Expo, and uh, Godfrey, I believe that you were with her uh, upon her departure from Expo. Uh, what has she been doing since then? Since then, she's had what I know has been a most enjoyable time for her because the Royal Yacht Britannia has taken Her Majesty and Prince Philip up the St. Lawrence as far as Kingston and of course yesterday and I saw this happen there was a most marvelous sight as Britannia sailed through the thousand islands with lots and lots of small craft frolicking around and the Queen on deck watching it all and indeed taking some pictures with her own camera as she sailed to Kingston and then at Kingston this morning we had the ceremony of visiting McDonald's house that fanfare indicates that the Her Majesty the Queen is approaching Parliament Hill coming up Welling Street Wellington Street toward the parade square in front of the Parliament buildings. She is the Colonel-in-Chief of the Guards, and the other units are here today because they have not yet had the opportunity to display their battle honors from the Second World War. So they have decided that since the Queen was in Canada for her centennial visit, this would be a very good time to get those battle honors on the colors and on the guidon. You can hear the motorcycles in the background any moment now. They should be appearing in our screen. Coming from a luncheon at Government House, after a very busy morning, coming up from Cornwall. And of course, the flags. We continue to see them everywhere. The Union Jack is in evidence today, right beside the Canadian flag. And there are also centennial emblems placed strategically around the hill. Peeking over the tops of the crowd, you can just see the motorcade coming in now. Her Majesty is in the lead car with the Duke of Edinburgh and her Aquarii Colonel C.A. Reed. There's the royal car flying Her Majesty's personal Canadian flag. Along with her today in the second car, Sir Michael Edine, the Queen's private secretary, and General Graham, the Canadian secretary to the Queen, in the third car. Right in the center there in the asphalt walks, the color party, the ensigns of the color. The colors are cased at the moment. We won't have an opportunity to look at those new colors until they are draped over the drum piles. 
drums have been piled as they were in days of old to provide religious ceremonies in the field. Godfrey, from what you've seen so far, has this been a typical kind of reception? It's been a very good reception and certainly typical. And I think that the reception generally in this six days of this particular tour, and I've covered every one in which Her Majesty has been among her Canadian people over here ever since, indeed, she was Princess Elizabeth. I think it's been marvelous and has really made a nonsense of the stories that there wasn't enthusiasm. She's wearing a lilac silk dress and coat today with a hat of violets, a bow at the back, and as she steps out of the car, she's meeting the Minister of Defense, the Honorable Paul Hellyer, the Associate Minister, Leo Cadieu, General Allard, Chief of the Defense Staff, and Major General Roger Rowley, Colonel of the Canadian Guards and Honorary Colonel of the Cameron Highlanders of Ottawa. Now down the rich royal carpet being escorted by Major General Rowley. This is Lieutenant Colonel C.D. Carlson, Commanding Officer, 2nd Battalion, the Canadian Guards, and the Commanding Officer of this parade today. He has been an Army man since 1943 and was granted a commission in September of 1945, approaching the dais to speak to Her Majesty the Queen. Good afternoon, Your Majesty. Guards found by the 1st and 2nd Battalion of Your Majesty's Canadian Guards, the Ontario Regiment, the Sherbrooke Hussars, the 1st Hussars, and the Cameron Highlanders of Ottawa are formed up for the ceremony of the consecration and presentations of guidons and colours. Do you wish to inspect, Your Majesty? The inspection begins, and in the background, booming out, you can hear that 21-gun salute. That's coming from Nepean Point in behind the Parliament buildings, and it is being fired by the 30th Field Artillery. And here is that very special Jeep. It's clocked only about 560 miles. It's used only for royal occasions. This is the first time it's been used by Her Majesty the Queen. It was actually built for transporting General Vanier for his inspections of the guard.
And the band begins the playing of the selection, Colors. That Jeep is probably one of the best cared for vehicles in the Army. It's got chrome and brass handles. There's a red carpet inside in which the Queen is standing. And uh, I'm told that the tires are painted black. And of course, it's very delicately cared for by Corporal Chevrier, the driver. I would say there's very little chance of a breakdown in that vehicle this afternoon. And along the first rank, inspecting the first battalion, the Canadian Guards. Passing along the ranks in front of the Ontario Regiment, the Sherbrooke Hussars and the First Hussars from London, Ontario, and making the turn at the corner through the rigid rows where the Cameron Highlanders stand. Godfrey Talbot, how does this ceremony differ from the ones you would have seen on Horse Guards Parade in London? Well, I think in one respect, what I'd like to say is that it doesn't differ at all because it's just as immaculate in its lines and its drill as anything Her Majesty has seen in her own capital in London. I think it's a most beautiful parade, and of course you have the variety of the regiments here, the variety of costume. It differs, of course, in one respect, in that because this is a multiplicity of presentation of colours, there isn't really time this afternoon for the old colours to be here and for the old colours to be trooped away. That's always a very moving moment, as you know in Canada also, uh, when the old colours to the tune of Old Lang Syne are trooped off the field of the parade. Here, it's simply the new ones, and of course, except in the one case of the Sherbrooke, uh, they are colours replacing old ones. But it is, I must say, a wonderful parade, a wonderful setting here. Nothing in horse guards can, I think, better the lines of soldiers that the Queen sees here. And of course, here, whilst this inspection is going on, we might remember that the Queen is very accustomed to inspecting on wheels. All over the Commonwealth, Her Majesty has been in not quite the same sort of vehicle, but very similar ones, driving on along the ranks of her troops. And uh, the, these soldiers and the public here are seeing not only the head of the Commonwealth, not only uh, the Queen of Canada, but probably the most experienced inspector of lines of soldiery in the whole world, in the person of Her Majesty. That Jeep is used for two reasons, actually, in Canada, for speed, A, and B, for courtesy. I suppose that she would have walked many miles further during her tour at Expo, but you can imagine how long it would take to inspect these ranks today in high heels. Yes, I think uh, no one is more experienced, of course, than Her Majesty in the hazards of footwear and soft ground. But this is perfectly splendid and a wonderful sight, too. Now passing the ranks of the massed bands under the direction of Major Charles Adams. Back to the dais now, and the inspection is completed. Now, I'm sure that many of you have been asking just what is a color and what is a guidon. Well, we have an opportunity here to tell you about that. The moment the parade begins to make preparations 
for the consecration by the chaplains. And there are 14 chaplains today representing the various regiments on parade. May I have permission to carry on with the ceremony of the consecration and presentation of Gidons and Colors? Her Majesty gives permission to carry on, and Lieutenant Colonel Carson returns to the parade. The Lieutenant Colonel, of course, is a rigid disciplinarian when he's on parade. I had the opportunity of meeting him the other day. He's a tall, extremely friendly, kindly man. But it's paradoxical that when he is on parade, he must be steadfast in giving those commands. And so the preparations for the consecration ceremony begin now. The ensigns of the color will come forward, drape the new colors across the drums. The chaplains will come out, and the field officers of the color will also move forward. So this does give us an opportunity to talk a little here about colors and guidon. Their origins, their origins are actually obscured in antiquity, but uh, most historians and military experts do agree that the use of standards, as they are called, was based on the need to identify quickly one's friends in battle. Of course, that hasn't changed today. Various countries have various colors. They were used in those days as rallying points in battle. They easily evolved into symbols of military pride and loyalty. And today, the Army lists three good reasons for battle standards or colors. One, as memorials of gallant deeds. Two, as symbols of regimental spirit. And then, of course, three, as rallying points in battle. The last is a traditional sort of listing because fighting units no longer carry colors into battle. The last time colors were used by British troops was on January the 26th, 1881. And that was at the Battle of Lang's Neck in the Boer War. They were then carried by the 58th Foot Regiment. There are two forms of colors today. The standard, which is square, and the guidon, which comes from the word guidon, the French word guidon. It is translated roughly guide of man. It's a, a swallowtail. You could call it a pennon, I suppose. And uh, one is for the colors, for the infantry or foot soldiers, and the other is used for the cavalry. Now, the Sherbrooke Hussars and the 1st Hussars have their origins in cavalry, but the Ontario Regiment have their origins in infantry. However, they eventually became a tank regiment, and since they became a mounted regiment, they too were allowed to use the guidon. Godfrey, is this only a Commonwealth ceremony as we understand it? Well, the ceremony of presenting colours in this form, I think, is peculiar to the British Commonwealth. But, of course, all over the world, military formations have their standards, have their banners, have their flags, have their colours, and there are presentation ceremonies. But as we see it here, I think it is peculiar uh, to the United Kingdom and the British Commonwealth of Nations. What is, of course, very special and very interesting to me as a uh, visitor here uh, from the United Kingdom is to see the multiplicity of colours. I don't think anywhere in the world, in the Commonwealth, the Queen has presented so many colours at one ceremony nor seen, for that matter, so many chaplains. Fourteen chaplains we have here, including the two chaplains general. And, of course, they make a remarkable sight here on Parliament Hill. You may have noticed from time to time a slight ripple in your television picture. That is caused when one of our cameras is shooting through the area of the Centennial Flame out at the uh, front of the walkway leading up to the Parliament buildings and the Gothic Arch. The colors now being draped over the drums. It's interesting to note that the first hussars have never displayed battle ah! or had a guidon to fly. The first hussars are from London, Ontario, and they will be given the freedom of the city very shortly, a ceremony which allows a regiment to march through a city with fixed bayonets and colors flying. So this is indeed a big day for them. 
Her Majesty the Queen now coming out for the consecration ceremony. Reverend sirs, on behalf of the regiments assembled, we ask you to bid God's blessing on these our guidon and color. We are ready so to do. For as much as men at all times have made for themselves signs and emblems of their allegiance to their rulers and of their duty to uphold those laws and institutions which God's providence has called them to obey, we, following this ancient and pious custom and remembering that God himself led his people Israel by a pillar of fire by night and a pillar of cloud by day, are met together before God to ask his blessing on these guidons and colors, which are to represent to us duty towards sovereign and country. Let us therefore pray, Almighty God, of his mercy to grant that they may never be unfurled, save in the cause of justice and righteousness, and that he may make them be to those who follow them a sign of his presence in all dangers and distresses and so increase their faith and hope in him who is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Notre secours est dans le nom du Seigneur. Qui a fait le ciel et la terre. Le Seigneur soit avec vous. Et avec votre esprit. Prions le Seigneur. Ô Dieu tout-puissant et éternel, qui est la source de tout bien et qui donne la force aux armes héroïques, Daigne entendre nos humbles prières et bénir ces guidons et drapeaux confiés à notre armée. Fais qu'ils nous protègent contre les nations rebelles et que par ton puissant secours, ils soient redoutables aux ennemis du peuple chrétien. Qu'ils soient un gage de courage et de victoire pour ceux qui mettent en toi toute leur confiance, car c'est toi, Seigneur, qui as le pouvoir de mettre fin à toutes les guerres et de protéger ceux qui espèrent en toi. Par Jésus-Christ, ton Fils, notre Seigneur, qui vit et règne avec toi dans l'unité du Saint-Esprit, car il est Dieu pour les siècles des siècles. Amen. Amen. To the service of God and the hallowing of his holy name, we, we dedicate, dedicate ourselves afresh. afresh. To the maintenance of honor and the sanctity of man's plated word, we dedicate ourselves afresh to the protection of all those who pass to and fro on their lawful occasions. We dedicate ourselves afresh to the preservation of order and good government. We dedicate ourselves afresh to the hallowed memory of our comrades whose courage and endurance add undying luster to our emblems. We dedicate our guidons and colors in the continual remembrance of our solemn oath and in token of our resolve faithfully and truly to keep it to the end, we dedicate our guidons and colors. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we do consecrate and set apart these guidons and colors that they may be a sign of our duty towards our queen and our country in the sight of God. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, who rulest over all things, accept, we beseech thee, our service this day. Bless what has been blessed in thy name. Let thy gracious favor rest upon those who shall follow these guidons 
and colors now about to be committed to that trust. Give them courage, and may their courage ever rest on their sure confidence in thee. May they show self-control in the hour of success, patience in the time of adversity, and may their honor lie in seeking the honor and glory of thy great name. Guide the counsel of those who shall lead them, sustain them by thy help in time of need. Grant they may also faithfully serve thee in this life, that they fail not finally to obtain an entrance into thy heavenly kingdom through the merits of thy blessed Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May God, who has called you to this service, enable you to fulfill it. May the Father make you strong and tranquil in the knowledge of his love. May the Lord Christ bestow upon you the courage of his gentleness and the steadfastness of his brave endurance. May the Holy Spirit grant you that self-control which comes from the gift of his wisdom. And, and may, may the, the blessing, blessing of, of God the, the Father, Father, the Son, the Son and the, the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit be upon you now and always. always. Amen. The two chaplains general conducting the service, Air Commodore the Venerable E.S. Light, Chaplain General Protestant, Air Commodore the Venerable the Reverend J.P. Davignon, Chaplain General Roman Catholic Faith. Now the colors will be distributed and this is a solemn moment. In the guards, the Queen's color is crimson and the regimental color contains the great union. There's the crimson color of the Queen as Colonel of the regiment. In the days when the Colonel actually raised the regiment, the Colonel's and Major's colors were all crimson. In 1855, the state undertook to provide all colors of the army and accordingly, Queen Victoria directed that the Queen's or first color should be crimson and the regimental or second color, the Great Union in the Guards regiments. Ready now for the presentation to the 2nd Battalion, the Canadian Guards. You'll note here that there is a Union Jack in the left-hand corner. That's merely to distinguish the 2nd Battalion from the 1st on the Queen's color. Colors being presented to the Ontario Regiment with their motto, Faithful and Prepared. They've been presented to the Sherbrooke Khazars. And their new motto is, Remain Steadfast. And the Cameron Highlanders of Ottawa carrying with them on their regimental colors, the city of Ottawa motto, advance. And at this moment, as they carry their new colors, the men remember their fathers, their brothers, their uncles and cousins who fought and made the sacrifice in two wars. The colors, of the Cameron Highlanders now carrying the battle honors from the Second World War. And on the guidon of the Ontario Regiment, the Sherbrooke Hussars and the First Hussars, the battle honors. Commanding officers, officers, warrant officers, non-commissioned officers and men. It has given me the greatest pride and pleasure to inspect your regiments and to present new colors and guidons to the 1st and 2nd Battalions, Canadian Guards, the Cameron Highlanders of Ottawa, the Ontario Regiment, the 1st Hussars, and the Sherbrooke Hussars. The presentation of new colors is always a very special occasion, but the symbolism of today's ceremony
takes on a particular meaning. It takes place here in the capital city in this centennial year as a tribute and an appreciation of the contribution of all Canadians who have served their country in war and peace during the last hundred years. We recognize on this occasion the strength and security they have given to the Canadian nation and to the cause of justice and peace in many parts of the world. The battle honors embroidered on your new colors tell part of the story. South Africa, the two world wars, and the Korean War give ample proof of the courage and loyalty of your regiments in action. Service with the North Atlantic Treaty Organization in Germany and with the United Nations peacekeeping force in Cyprus, often under difficult and trying circumstances, has shown the sense of responsibility and steadfastness with which you have undertaken these duties. None of this was achieved without tragic sacrifices. And these colors are also carried as a proud memorial to the many brave men who lost their lives in the service of their sovereign and country. It is also most fitting that this ceremony should take place here on Parliament Hill. This is where the destiny of Canada is decided. We recognize today the unswerving support and protection which the armed forces of Canada have given to those democratic principles and institutions which have been the foundation for the growth of Canada as a nation for the last hundred years. Vos six régiments réunis ici aujourd'hui ont servi avec distinction tout au cours du siècle qui vient de s'écouler. Et ils ont contribué à alléger le fardeau des obligations militaires qui reposaient sur les forces armées du monde libre en vue du maintien de la liberté. Ces obligations les ont fait participer à quatre conflits importants en Afrique du Sud, en Europe et en Corée, servir au sein de l'Alliance de défense de l'OTAN et aider au maintien de la paix pour le compte des Nations unies. Cette contribution au maintien de l'ordre dans le monde est allée de pair avec les responsabilités toujours changeantes et croissantes que le Canada a assumées dans la communauté internationale. Connaissant vos magnifiques réalisations, de même que le sentiment du devoir dont vous avez fait preuve dans une multitude de domaines du service militaire, c'est avec la plus grande confiance que je vous remets ces drapeaux et guidons. These colors and guidons are now in your care. I know that they are in safe hands, and I know that they will always be carried as a reminder of your duty and in honor of the good name and noble traditions of your regiments. Her Majesty the Queen has addressed the your troops. Your Majesty, your regiments paraded here today are exceedingly happy that it has been possible for you to be here to preside at this ceremony. On behalf of all ranks of the five regiments to whom you have presented colors and guidons, may I thank you for the honor that you have done us. This is indeed a proud day for us and one that will remain a memory for us all. These guidons and colors will always be an inspiration, not only to those of us who serve in the regiments today, but also to those who will come to fill the ranks in the service of their queen and their country. And may I express to you, ma'am, our loyalty and our devotion. And may I assure you at the same time that we will, by our deeds, 
preserve the honor and guarantee the safekeeping of these colors and guidons, which are at once symbols of your gracious sovereignty and of the honors and traditions of these five regiments. Thank you. Major General Roger Rowley, Colonel of the Canadian Guards and Honorary Colonel of the Cameron Highlanders of Ottawa, has replied to Her Majesty. Cameron Highlanders and the 1st Battalion, the Canadian Guards, fall back to form line from the hollow square in preparation for the march past. Drummers from the massed bands coming forward to retrieve their drums. Base drum and two side drums forming each pile. The Duke of Edinburgh is wearing the uniform of the Colonel-in-Chief Royal Canadian Regiment.
The massed bands will now be complete as the drummers move back in line. And the commands for the march past will shortly be heard. Royal salute and the new colors are now on parade. They now must be distributed to the head of their individual units. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Carlson approaching the dais. your permission to march past and to march off. Thank you, ma'am. Permission granted for the march past and march off. There have been many heroic deeds in 
the regiments on parade today from the Ontario Regiment, from the Sherbrooke Hussars, and the 1st Hussars. For example, the 1st Hussars from London, Ontario on D-Day, it is said that uh, they penetrated further into enemy territory than any other unit. And apparently what happened is that a tank under the command of Lieutenant R.W. McCormick lost contact with the infantry it was to support and simply pushed inland almost 10 miles. This was so far inside enemy territory that a German soldier, thinking it was one of the tanks of uh, his own regiment, saluted as it scurried back to the lines. And in front of the headquarters of the 1st Hussars in London, Ontario, is a tank known as the Holy Roller, since it apparently went through battle with little damage to itself. March past is underway, beginning with the standard of St. George. Regimental and Queen's Colors of the 1st Battalion, the Canadian Guards. The New Colors, Queen's and Regimental, 2nd Battalion, the Canadian Guards. Ontario Regiment and as they appear in front of the saluting base we break into my boy Willie the new colors of the Ontario Regiment of Oshawa just passing through the screen New colors of the Sherbrooke Hussars. The Guidon. all coming from the Ontario Regiment Oshawa, the Sherbrooke Hussars, and the 1st Hussars from London, Ontario. And finally, the Cameron Highlanders of Ottawa. And with the pipes and drums, it's the March of the Cameron Men.
And finally, from the masked bands, the Great Little Army. The long rows will now move off down Wellington Street to the Supreme Court building. And Her Majesty the Queen is moving inside the Parliament building. Godfrey Talbot, what been, what's been your reaction to this presentation of colors in Guidon? Well, my reaction is that I'm quite sure that Her Majesty will be saying to Colonel Carlson, congratulations, what a wonderful parade, because I think it has been very fine indeed. You can be very proud of this. It's awfully difficult, of course, to march on grass. There's no pounding of the heels on the hard road. And I think they've kept time and kept line very splendidly indeed with snap and precision. Inside the Parliament buildings, Her Majesty will hold a private reception for officers of the units participating today. The reception is expected to take from 35 to 40 minutes. And then she will appear outside again and proceed to her last public function of this centennial tour, a visit to the National Arts Center site for an unveiling of a commemorative plaque. And inside, beneath the Gothic arch of the Parliament buildings, we'll be returning very shortly.